Hello and welcome to Wolfman Gaming. This is my Bloodstain Curse of the Moon 2 blind playthrough and we are at the ice level. Every gamer's favorite element when it comes to level design. Ice. Trumped only by its slightly warmer <laughs> friend called the water levels. Is there is, if there is something that can ruin a great game it's bringing in the blue element <laughs> into it. Because water levels are always hard to navigate. And anyone who has played Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which I think every person ever should do, knows probably what I'm talking about. Because in that game, if you're one of the few that hasn't played it, there is a water temple in that game that is, to be completely honest, totally atrocious to get through. <laughs> that when, when I'm playing that game, which it's been quite a long time since I last played, it's probably time to replay it soon once again. But that's that's the level that draws down how much I personally enjoy that game. And I know that on uh, the 3DS version of the game they actually made the water temple easier. Because the developers themselves realized that guys we we messed up. This was a mistake. <laughs> and every gamer went like yes. Yes it was. You made a mistake. Ah, here we have our old nemesis, Booberella. And I'm thinking, now is the time where it will become apparent what a beast Hachi was. Because I remember taking her on in episode 2. Everything was made so much easier by the fact that I didn't die. Uh, everything was made so much easier by the fact that Hachi, being a giant robot, didn't slip on the ice. And as I said then and will say once again, I'm gonna say it after I get into the boss room because there's too much shit going on. Uh, that is one of many details that really makes the experience of playing a game better. Because it's just a minor detail, but it does a lot for the experience. Because that is something they could have just skipped. But they didn't and I love it. So let's see if we can get up. Maybe not. I'm gonna hit you in the tits. I'm not gonna hit you in the tits because that doesn't do shit. Come on. Can we please switch character? Ha! <laughs> and this boss, of course, has a phase two. I know this. See? Maybe. I'm not gonna survive, so we're gonna sacrifice Miriam. Sorry, Miriam. <laughs> you died for a great cause. And Sangetsu is really low on health. Because I'm hoping that the boss will go straight into phase 2. If there is any decency and fairness in this game, she'll go straight into phase 2. Or just have a sliver of her health in phase 1. She does not go immediately into phase 2. 
So maybe she has just a tiny wee bit of health. Ah, quarter health. I can work with that. And the annoying part is we have to jump constantly. Also have the wrong sub weapon equipped for <sighs> shit. Yeah, going in here with just Alfred, uh, that will work out great. <laughs> that guy, the guy that has the reach of a Chihuahua, and is about as intimidating. <laughs> If I had had the Morningstar sub weapon for Sangetsu, this fight would be over and done with yeah, like super speed. <sighs> but at least I'm gonna try. Yeah, worst attempt ever, <laughs> but at least now we go in there with a full party, and hopefully we get in there with a full party, yes we do, and we're gonna send Jubble to do most of the grunt work here in uh, the first part. Maybe we... I could have stocked up on magic. Because this... Yeah. As... Uh, what's called Tim Gunn on uh, Project Runway says. Make it work. Tank that. Just... Try to put in as much damage as I possibly can. There we go. Beautiful. So let's see if we can keep. That was pathetic. I realized this. I had a great chance going into phase two. And what do I do? I completely mess it up. And now my trump card was Alfred is dead. At least we have Jubble left, so what's left of phase one will at least go quickly. We can There we go. Oh I hate the sliding. I'm just gonna keep an eye on my life bar. Try to see if we can get through this. We're making great progress. Switch to Sangetsu because he is getting too close to death. Okay, that worked. <laughs> Sorry Alfred, you weren't as great as I thought you were. Doing the fancy moves, eh? So that was level 4, I think. We're going into level 5. 
Level 5, Unstoppable Force. I would say that that is Hachi. Which sadly isn't with us. Uh, let's see. We have that lava flow. And I like how they switch it up. We're going from an ice level to a fire level. Fire levels usually aren't as bad as ice levels because nothing is as bad as an ice level except for water levels. But this can be quite trying. We're gonna do this the wind's way. We are just gonna use the fact that out. Not face tank, but ass tank. <laughs> Fireball. With Jubble. But at least I live to tell the tale. And now I'm gonna make sure to remember that Jubble can fly. So if this goes... Pear-shaped. As it did. But at least we survived. Uh, what I was gonna say was that Jubble can fly if I needed <laughs> that ability. Uh, yes, Jubble can fly. So we're gonna head up here. And just bypass that big hunk of thing. Oh yes, checkpoints. Gotta love them checkpoints. I remember in my first run, where I wasn't quite sure <laughs> when I uh, came to a checkpoint. At first I didn't realize that it was a checkpoint, and that's one of those things. That when you try to talk and play a game at the same time, sometimes your brain just doesn't brain. <laughs> if you know what I mean, because it's quite obvious. The function of those candles, but I just couldn't work it out. I thought like, oh, this must be something special. I'm gonna try to hit it with my sword. <laughs> Why is every level that they throw something up into the air so it starts raining down? Oops, wrong button. And once again, I do a quick little shortcut. It was a bit stupid to land on the enemy, but... Let's see. And... I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the Hollow Knight. Or not Hollow Knight in particular. But I played... Over the last couple of months, I played a lot of hard games. Which you probably know if you follow my my walkthroughs and blind playthroughs because I like to talk about that when I do these videos. Just a quick note, how the hell please you can do it that way. Yay, another checkpoint. Uh, I've been playing a lot of hard games. I've been playing through the Dark Souls series, I played through Sekiro when that came out even did a walkthrough for it and uh, I was talking to a friend of mine about getting addicted to high difficulty games and I think this this may have this may be a subject that I approached before that you get to a point or I feel sometimes feel that I have gotten to a point where uh, the difficulty is what spurs you on. That becomes your incentive to continue playing and suddenly casual games or casual difficulties don't interest you anymore. Which is a bit sad because <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine who has taken a break from hard games <laughs> going back to playing casual ones. And uh, the fact that he's probably at times having more fun than I am playing just through the fact that he plays games 
at this point as just pure enjoyment. You push some buttons, you follow a story, and you just enjoy the adventure. Whilst I'm sitting here, as I mentioned, <laughs> playing Hollow Knight, and I've spent a lot of time pointing at the TV, screaming at the top of my lungs. Sometimes I think my neighbors must be wondering what the fuck I'm up doing <laughs> at night. But. I think the point I was getting to I think I was getting to once again bra once again brain wouldn't brain so I just committed suicide in lava uh, I think after Hollow Knight I will take a break from playing hard games go back to playing a bit more A bit more casual games, so to speak. Just to relax, push some buttons and enjoy the adventure and try to get on these bloody platforms. <laughs> okay, that was just that that was pathetic. And this is the point in the game where Alfred came to the rescue and is probably gonna be the one to get us through this passage. Was well, same thing in Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 1. That horrible vertical room in the last level. Where you were being chased by some kind of sandworm thing, boss, Maduda. Alfred, the worst character overall in the game, was the one that got me through that level. Or through that room. Because I had wasted up all my weapon points with the uh, Jebel getting through the previous room. Damn, I hate the last level of the first game. But... Uh, what was I talking about? I was talking about difficulty in games. Yes. And it's a bit sad that... Yes, that's the second point I was getting to. <laughs> Playing those really hard games. Because I got a question from another friend and a co-worker who is also a gamer. And she asked me if there are any games I can't beat. Because she has gotten a little bit the impression sometimes of me being some kind of, for lack of a better word, god gamer. Which I by no means am. Definitely not. But the thing that gets me through those really hard games is the fact that I am stubborn <laughs> to the point of self <laughs> Destruction almost. <laughs> because some, as I said, I enjoy Hollow Knight a lot. N I do not enjoy Hollow Knight all the time. I did not enjoy... Fuck. Should have focused on where I was. But something inside of me just triggers and I decide I am not gonna be beaten. By programming and it's also I feel it's so satisfying when you're really struggling with something and you finally manage to beat it you feel you feel like a god gamer but the reason I managed to get through hard games is just through sheer attrition I refuse to give up even though I sometimes I think I probably should. <laughs> because I have actually recently sort of upgraded my studio. I have not purchased a new computer or something or anything like that. But I have bought a new TV. Actually an insanely big one. I, uh, 
am nowadays sporting a 65 inch. I used to have a 49 inch. And I gotta say, I love this TV. <laughs> it felt at the beginning it felt humongous and i did the same fucking thing again now i've gotten used to it and uh, i gotta say it's really nice to play games on and watch movies on because since it is so big it almost feels like you have a cinema in your living room and I did quite a lot of research before I bought it. It is a Samsung QLED TV. I want, I would like to get a 65 inch OLED, but I think they are far too expensive. I don't want to spend that much money. This one cost enough. <laughs> but I was a bit afraid at the beginning that it would feel too big for living room. So I, I went into different home pages and checked and saw what the recommendations were when it came to size and ah, and distance from the screen and we did make the requirements this I am so bold and as I said at first it felt gargantuous but now I'm getting, I've gotten used to it, and it's it's nice that you can sit straight in front of the TV and see the whole screen. So it's not like you have to move your eyes to see what's going on on the right side. But anyway, that was a very long rant, <laughs> and I'm gonna do my last attempt at this boss before I end this episode. Hopefully we can kill it I am not feeling confident because Miriam only has half health and he has slightly lower it may not work I'm feeling skeptical depends a bit on what he does this we can punish why is my triangle button not working properly? Suddenly it just lost inputs, but either way, I'm gonna end this episode right here and we'll take him on in the next one. But until next time, I wanna thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in my next video. So until next time, <laughs> this is the Wolfman signing off.